Okay, we're back. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and this is theCUBE, Silicon Angle's production of VMworld 2013. theCUBE goes to events like this. You know, we, we cover tech in depth. We go out and find tech athletes. We try to extract the signal from the noise, bring you the best guests that are out there at these events. This is the software-defined storage spotlight. We're unpacking a lot of the SDS trends. You hear a lot of talk about software-defined Wikibon has called it software-led. We started tracking this a, a number of years ago, looking at some of the trends. Eric Holbert is here, along with Brady Wilson. Eric's the CTO, oh, sorry, CEO and co-owner of Opus Interactive, and Brady is the CTO. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Thank you. So let's talk about Opus. You guys are a service provider. Tell us a little bit about your business, you know, why you started the company. Uh, we started the company to sort of you know, solve that problem that a lot of uh, companies were having around you know, workforce or work, workloads they needed to put into the cloud uh, and data centers. We actually started as an application development and a creative company back in 1994 and made that transition into actually hosting and managing that infrastructure for customers. So really just trying to you know, be technology, meet humanity, actually have people behind the solution and VMware is the choice that we did on HP hardware. Yeah, the name implies creative. So mm -hmm. you guys started there, you just didn't, never changed the name, right? Yep. Yeah, we know that, that story. So, okay, but so, so the primary focus now is, is you're providing infrastructure services, is that yep. right? Yeah, infrastructure as a service and IT as a service. Okay, and, and talk a little bit more about that. So what do I, what do I buy from you? Uh, you buy anything from compute and storage services, uh, whether you want just straight infrastructure, you know, like a private dedicated cloud, uh, not public cloud, you know, like an Amazon or Azure or things like that. That's sort of the hybrid cloud, and then co-location services, and then any kind of managed services and security that goes on top of that. Okay, so so uh, you said not not a public cloud. It's a it's a private cloud solution that's that's hosted by you guys. Correct, right? in, yeah. in one of our five data centers. Okay, yeah. and, and talk a little bit about you know, types of customers, name customers if you can. So the type of customers for us, we've got verticals, travel and tourism is a pretty big one for us, uh, a lot of marketing agencies, so uh, we do a lot of hosting of sort of like what we call throwaway campaigns, so it'll be things for like Intel and HP, Microsoft, Cisco that neither side wants to actually host the information or you know, that, that campaign, like Super Bowl ads, things like that, where they're driving the traffic to the, you know, the actual hosting infrastructure. So we'll do a lot of those, being that neutral third-party service provider. Uh, and then uh, also finance and healthcare uh, and some retail as well as uh, manufacturing. So, so pretty, pretty big variety on our verticals. So, so Brady, can you talk about your Super Bowl ads got my attention, because uh, <laughs> I want to talk about that a little bit. So can you talk about the infrastructure a little bit, how you've architected it and what it, what it looks like, paint a picture of your shop for us. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think, uh, as long as I can remember, actually, we've actually really kind of uh, settled on HP hardware, actually across the board. Um, and honestly, it was left hand first is when we started before it was HP. So we were really happy when it was HP that bought uh, left hand. <laughs> yeah. um, but we have all HP blades, um, a lot of HP networking, and now all HP storage as well. And that's kind of the core infrastructure. We're almost 100% VMware virtualization and cloud. So, so 100% of your server, virtually 100% of your servers are, no pun intended, virtualized. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and and so, can you give us a relative, you know, sort of size of the the environment? I mean, what what are we talking? Um, I guess here? if you talk about numbers and things like that, you know, several terabytes of memory, several uh, probably about a thousand VMs managed, and several hundred terabytes of, so of pretty, storage across pretty the board. Big scope. Okay, so you guys started as a left hand shop. So this. This whole week to hear so much about software-defined mm -hmm. storage. When you guys first heard that term, did you sort of shrug and say, okay, here's another buzzword, or was it something you said, ah, this is, this is what we've been doing? I mean, what was your reaction to that? Um, yeah, it, it comes across as a buzzword initially, but um, it is, I think like cloud, it's, it's a way you kind of can tell that yes, this is the way things are going. Uh, it makes sense, you know, a lot of what we do is all software. Uh, based, we're, we're managing operating systems, we're managing VMware as, as an operating system. Um, so why shouldn't we manage our network? Why shouldn't we manage our storage in the same way? So, you, okay, so you're hosting these Super Bowl ads. Let's just take that one example, because everybody can relate to it. And, uh, and obviously, 
you know, you think, okay, you're going to get massive amounts of, of traffic if the ad's a, a good one. Can you share some experiences there and, and how you guys handled it? Yeah. Um, it, uh, a lot of it has to do with building the, the platform properly to begin with. Yeah, right? I want you to talk about that. Exactly. Uh, uh, and, how you um, architect it. To, and to that. It, when they come to us with something like that, we feel we've architected a platform that is going to handle that regardless, right? Um, uh, we really trust in, and especially since we're talking about storage now, uh, we really trust that our storage through HP, this left hand uh, software, is going to be able to handle uh, both from a performance standpoint, but it's called scale out, right? We can scale and grow as we need to. So something like that, uh, we make sure we have the platform there to begin with so that when we do get that kind of load, um, or maybe we get it or maybe we don't, like you said, if the ad's any good, <laughs> um, we're ready for it. Um, and we are confident that the software we've been using, left hand and now HP, is kind of really ready for any kind of load, no matter what it might be, uh, a mom and pop website or a Super Bowl ad. So, so what was the experience like when you first, first did this? You kind of stayed up all night the night before? And just make yeah. sure everything's going to work, and, and yeah, what kind of what kind of traffic did you see? Can you share any metrics, or you know, even even rough sort of order of magnitude indicators? Yeah, I don't know what kind of numbers we see on that. I mean, it. I don't remember the specifics, but I mean, it was enough to justify. And we had redundant load balancers and redundant firewalls, and you know, three three tier stack on that, and they had a significant amount of traffic. So, so your business value to your customers there was, we're, we're going to be able to handle this. You're going to be able to get your your branding out or your direct response or whatever it is. Yeah, absolutely, I mean, yeah. and it was nice too because they didn't want to have to engage in buying all the infrastructure and actually do all that. And for us, I mean, we have a white paper up on our website that talks about it, it was you know, three or four years ago, so it was really before getting to the, that kind of like you know, throwaway campaign stuff where you don't have to do that entire infrastructure. You can get exactly what you need, use it for that three or four months, and be done with it and move on to the next campaign. Okay, so you got this, this HP server infrastructure, uh, uh, what were they, Blade? Yeah, Service they're all Blade. Okay. So blade systems, um, and and then you've got a left hand array on top of that. So, so how about uh, the, we heard earlier about store virtual? You guys using store virtual yes. now? So what was that like when you brought that in? Just yeah, we pure, started using that about a year ago, actually. So pure software yeah. defined, if I can use that. Term. Yep. So we are running that, of course, on top of VMware. So what was that transition like? Um, uh, effortless, honestly. You know, we're already doing VMware, so putting, putting VS Store Virtual VSA as a VM on VMware is old hat, obviously. Um, and the software we already knew, because we're already using the hardware version of it, so the software we already knew, um, it's now exposed to VMware, we can just move workloads to it. Yeah. Same management interface, same software, just different hardware, different means to an end. And you're a pure VMware shop, right? Not yeah. using other hypervisors? Have you looked Correct. at other hypervisors? Or? Oh yeah, we've, we've, yeah, I keep an eye on all of them, absolutely. Yeah. But you're yeah. not using any for production? Not currently, anyway, right? no. Okay, do you, do you see that changing over time? Or? Uh, if we had a customer who really required it, we could do it. Okay, so so customer says, hey, we'll, we'll be a big customer if you do KVM or something. You'd exactly. say, great. Yeah. Yeah, we've okay. had some Hyper-V customers in the past that have now migrated to VMware, and then some like Solus VM open, you know, open stack type stuff as well, but it's a very, very small percentage of what we do. We try to be very focused on VMware. Yeah, just, um, well, t talk about the benefits of that um, f from a standpoint of, uh, of, of whether it's cost, you know, simplicity, ease of management, allows you to focus, and why, why I mean, a lot of service providers in your position will sort of chase any business, right? Uh, but, but you've been able to successfully stick with, yeah, with a, for sort us, of a homogeneous infrastructure. Yeah, I mean, realistically, we want to be very focused as one of our you know, core competencies being specifically VMware for the hypervisor and then on the, you know, the HP side for both storage and compute. You know, being very focused like that across multiple verticals helps us gain more business and you know a better reputation over the years. I mean, we've been doing it for a long time since '94. So, you know, we uh, we did our first set of servers and co-location back in '96. Did a little bit, you know, a little stint of internet service providing as well. So we've certainly been around for a long time yeah. doing that. And also developing the applications back in the day originally has lended some experience for actually building these big apps across the board, whether it's commerce or you know, complete content management systems, so. So that you guys are building? Yeah, we yeah. used to, I mean, we, yeah, okay, we don't, don't do anymore, that anymore. Right. We split off from that part of the company, but yeah. Brady and I had that direct experience, I mean, we used to manage oh, all the developers those. as well, yeah. So. Okay, so you got, uh, your compute is virtualized, I mean, to virtually 100%, you said, and now you've got this software-defined storage layer. Um, did it, did, when you went from sort of an array-based 
system to the software-defined, you said it was seamless, okay. Did it change anything, however, in terms of management complexity, or you know, what, what difference does it make from a business standpoint when you made that transition? I'd say one of the things it's, it's doing for us is it's kind of compressing our compute and storage, bringing it back together. I'm sorry, um, say that again, compressing Kind of what? compressing our compute and storage, oh, okay, our, yeah. our platforms, okay. uh, bringing them back together. You know, we're a smallish company as far as headcount, so What's I don't have, uh, well, I mean, we got 10 people, right? Okay. I, got, I got four admins that, that uh, I need to manage everything. I don't have siloed, you know, I don't have a storage team, I don't have a backup team. We have to manage it all. So. Uh, the, the closer that stuff is together, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the more software that is. You don't want to manage is. multiple boxes, right? Yeah, I mean, the more right. software all of that is, uh, this talks about network as well, uh, the better off we are. Yeah, you don't want to be a, a deep storage expert. No, right? I don't uh, want to learn storage language, no. Yeah. <laughs> no offense to all you storage experts out there. Yeah. You know, provisioning loans is not something that you want to do. Yeah. 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 But I mean, realistically, right, like Brady is saying, even though we've got a smaller amount of people, right, we've got five locations, a little over 200,000 square feet of available data center space to us, the amount of actual VMs we can manage and the infrastructure that we can do per, you know, per admin, sysadmin, right, is just only growing. So it's been quite a change in terms of really for us getting it to a lower cost per gig, but be flexible on how many you know, IOPS we can actually get out of it despite which you know, piece that we're trying to, to sell to a you customer. Know, you know what's interesting about this discussion, you always hear how you know, small companies, you know, web companies go on Amazon, they can compete with the big guys. You, you're, you guys are a, a, a small from a headcount cloud service provider competing evidently very effectively with, with larger firms using you know, infrastructure that is you know, off the shelf, simplified. You're not doing you know, what a lot of, you, when you envision like hyperscale, right? PhDs, right. And, you know, putting bits together. So talk a little bit about how you're able to compete with the bigger guys and, and, and the importance of the infrastructure in terms of enabling that. Uh, well, you know, definitely like you said, right? Obviously off the shelf, high quality hardware mm -hmm. and software, doing it well. Uh, a lot of the verticals that we hit around like travel tourism finance, they're typically applications that we've helped either build in the past, have some, some deep experience there, so we can provide that level of assurance for customers. We also have a lot of other software as a service providers like Sitecore, Ektron, Sitefinity that are pushing out there that we'll get a lot of business that way. And then e-commerce because of our experience there. And then obviously just being around for a really long time and relying on our partners like HP and VMware, we get a lot of business that way too. So it's just continued to be a good aspect I, behind I, that. I'd add to that really quickly that, uh, back to the platform side of that, um, the, the, the tools and the platform we get from HP and VMware as well, since that's our platform, that's what allows us to do a lot of work where we couldn't by ourselves. Uh, we can't develop apps to do what VMware products can do. We can't develop that. Right? I can't go with an open source hypervisor and expect to get the performance monitoring, the management, um, the federation, the, the hybrid cloud, you know, all of that. I can't get that ourselves. So that's why we have to get the right platform to be able to compete. So what do you think about the open source you know, movement? I mean, it's, we, we've had discussions on theCUBE this week. You know, some folks say, I mean, you got two camps, right? One camp says the open source is going to win the long game. Ultimately, they'll figure it out and get there. The other camp says, it's, well, today anyway, it takes a long time. Um, and they may or may not get there. You know, our strategy is to stay ahead. We had Carl Eschenbach said, you know, we're going to keep functionally staying ahead. And you, you hear that. So, from a consumer standpoint, you just don't have the time, is what I just heard. You know, or the resources to go you know, open source. So, do you see that changing over time, or do you see, you know, sort of a mixed model where you do more open source? I, mean, I would say I would continue to see a mixed model. Yeah. I mean, I love open source. We use it where we can. Uh, where do certain, you use it? Certain places. Um, well, I mean, we, we used to use it pretty heavily in monitoring. Uh, we switched that up eventually, but we yeah. use that quite a bit. Um, we are not opposed to using open source tools. If, like we talked about earlier, if someone came to us and really had to have something that was virtualization from the open source world, we would do it yeah. uh, and embrace it. Um, but, but not for open source sake. You do it because yeah, it drives we, you know, the best tool to yeah. the job. It's the same yeah. reason we're, we're sort of operating system agnostic, Windows or Linux, what's best for the customer well, in this situation. A lot of your colleagues are dogmatic about this issue, right? Oh, no, I'm not going anywhere unless it's open source. I mean, it's probably you know, less than 20% of the 
the, the, the audience, but it's a vocal one. Yeah. You know, so you, uh, what I'm hearing from you is more practical, you basically. Yeah. Got a, got a mm -hmm. job to do, you got a business to run. Yep. You got owner in your title. You know, <laughs> don't worry about stuff like that. All right, what else? I'll give you the final word uh, on, on uh, sort of your business, you know, where you're going, relationship with HP, VMware. Uh, you know, we're growing quite a bit. We've actually had a really good quarter. We've just grown a little over 20% this last quarter. We're continuing to do some expansion, both in the Portland market as well as Dallas, Texas. And we'll hopefully be bringing online another uh, cloud pod for us in Vegas sometime later this year. Anything, uh, I said last question, uh, I lied. <laughs> Anything HP and or VMware could do to just make your life easier? Uh, no, they've been doing everything that we need right, you know, lately, especially with uh, you know, the store ver virtual and then some of the new features released. Th this uh, conference has been huge for us, so it's going to be really good. Awesome, make our lives we have a lot of work to do. Yeah. Great. All right, gentlemen, thanks very much for coming Thank on theCUBE. Thank you very much. Pleasure, uh, pleasure meeting you. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We're right back. We're going to talk to FedEx and uh, stay on this software-defined storage theme. This is theCUBE. We're live from VMworld 2013. I'm Dave Vellante, and we'll be right back. <laughs>